Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise God. All glory and peace and joy be unto you from our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. <laughs> oh, he's so awesome. He's so wonderful. I know, I know, I know. Papa, so we hear you say that all the time. Well, what else you want me to say? You send me some more adverbs and adjectives for him because there's not enough of them in the whole world, no matter what language. Amen. He's wonderful. He's glorious. He's all about love and everything that he does for us. It's all about his love for his creation, his love for mankind, his love for his sons and daughters, his love for everyone, everyone. There are no exceptions, all nations. He is in love with all of you, all of us, all everywhere. He created the earth for us, for man. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. So everything he does is based on his love. Everything he gives us is based on his love because we can't earn it. You can't work for it. You can't pay for it. You can't do enough, say enough, be enough to, to be able to say that, oh, I earned that. Oh, that's why he loves me. No, he loves you because he made you, he created you. To be in love with you, he wants you in love with him. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. And so that's why he's always sending you the word, sending you the Bible, sending you preachers, teachers, apostles, evangelists, pastors, always sending you somebody, somewhere, lay people, non-lay, whatever, wherever you are, wherever you go. That's God. That is God sending someone to you so you can be back into your rightful family. Now, the family you were born into, that's your family, too. That's your physical family on the earth, of course. But the family of God is different. The family of God is eternal. You never die. You never, you, you never have to go and be punished or cry or be sad or be unhappy, be depressed, be stressed out ever again if you become a son of God. Now, don't misunderstand what Apostle was saying. You know we're still going to go through life situations and circumstances, sicknesses, poverty, death, all of these things, all kinds of troubles financial, you know, people are walking around on this earth starving, have no food, no water, homeless, no clothing, nothing, no shoes on their feet, children, grown-ups, all ages, all sizes, male, female. So you say, well, apostle, that's not love. No, it's not. And man did that to himself. God did not do that. Stop blaming God for what you are doing to yourself. Oh, my, 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 my. He said, I will help you. Just come back to me. Humble yourself. Call on my name. Pray. Ask me, and I will do it. You know how some children have parents, and they just ask the parents, ask me. I will do it for you. You don't have to be without lack. You, you, you don't have to go hungry. If you want something to eat, you're, go ask your parents if you're not old enough to prepare it yourself. Isn't that wonderful that God gave us parents as children growing up? Some form of parenting. Even if your parents deserted you, even if your parents neglected you, even if your parents abused you, even, no matter what they did, God had somebody else to come along and to bring you through, to help you through. If you live even in a third world country, there's somebody coming to help, to help rescue, to help save, to help deliver. My, 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 my. 
But God says, if you become mine, I will bring you out of all of that sickness, all of that poverty, all of that lack, all of that pain, all of that hurt, all, 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 all of everything that's unlike me. Wow. And he says, I got my spirit to come to help you. The Holy Spirit, the Holy Ghost. Wow, Jesus. He is the one that comes to help. He is the one that comes to give you the revelation, wisdom, and knowledge. And you know, the last time we talked about how you cannot understand what he's doing, who he is, what he does, if you do not have his spirit living and dwelling in you. He said, if you abide in me and I abide in you, you can ask what you will and it shall be done. He said, if you ask believing, you shall receive it because he can bring it to pass. He said, I can do it, whatever you need me to do. I'm the God of the impossible. He said, what is your problem? <laughs> and then on top of all of that, he's so patient with us. Some of us are so stubborn that we don't want him to do anything for us. We're so full of pride and arrogance. We don't want God to, oh, I don't need God. What I need God for? Get in a situation that where you are totally helpless and you'll find out <laughs> what you need God for. <laughs> Hallelujah. Praise you, Jesus. God said, I'm able to do what? exceedingly, abundantly, above all, above all, that you could ask me or what you could even think. Why? Because my Holy Ghost power is in you. How? Through Christ Jesus, the church. So you are the body once you receive the Holy Spirit to live and dwell in you, you are that church. You are that body. You are that being that's going to be eternal. And don't you know, he said, not only have I done all of that for you and given all that to you, I will teach you how to do it. I will show you how to do it. I will give you the knowledge. I will give you the understanding. I will give you the information. I will give you the wisdom. I will give you the know-how. I will give you the implementation. I will give you the equipment. I will give you everything you need to get it done. My way, says the Lord. Walk in my way. Live according to my light, my truth. I am the truth. I am the light. I am the way. Walk you in it. He said, let me be the one. Don't try to be independent of me, says the Lord. I don't want you independent of me. I want you to be the child that I have anointed and called for you to be. And we can sit on the Father's lap because the Son paid the price to make all of that possible. Wow. Praise you, Jesus. Hallelujah, hallelujah. So I haven't even prayed for you yet. <laughs> so let me pray for you. Father God, in the mighty name of Jesus, I thank you once again. I acknowledge your presence here. This is your program, The Authentic Word. And so we ask you to bless the ears and the eyes that have not seen and have not heard yet all the things. Neither has it entered our hearts, all the things that you have prepared for us. Wow. Praise you, Jesus. Thank you, Father God, for your mercy, your grace, your loving kindness, your faithfulness, your understanding, your patience, your long-suffering patience with us. Thank you, Lord. And so whatever you want to impart in us today, 
we will receive it. We will receive it. And we bless your holy name. We give you all the glory, all the honor, all the power, all the everything. It belongs to you. Praise you, Lord. All the goodness. It's your goodness. It's your glory. It's your honor. It's your, well, your worship. Your worship. It's your worship. We worship you. And there's none like you. So we thank you again. We bless your holy name. And we are received today upon whatever it is that you desire to impart in us. In the mighty name of Jesus, Yeshua HaMashiach, I pray. Amen and amen. Well, I probably have been already taken up half of the program, but praise God. See, the Holy Spirit has his way of doing things, and there's no end to his ways of how he wants to do something through you. So you never have to keep trying to figure that out. You don't need to figure it out. It's a walk of faith. We walk by faith and not by sight. He is our God. We are his. He belongs to us. And he is our strength. He gives us the strength. He gives us the determination. He gives us the help. He gives us all that we need to make things work according to his divine orchestrated plan and purpose for our lives. And so, Father God, now we're going to go to the scripture that the Lord gave me. And believe it or not, I thought we were winding up the last program on the series of the Holy Ghost. But apparently not. So here we go again. And we're going to go to Acts chapter 1. And you know, the book of Acts is just that. The, the, it's the apostles and the disciples and all, some of the people who are getting saved and getting born again that's receiving the gospel being preached to them and getting baptized by the Holy Ghost. Getting baptized in the Holy Ghost. Oh, wow, 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 wow. Hallelujah. And so, and so this whole book, all of the chapters in the whole book of Acts, all 28 chapters of the book of Acts, it's just that. The Acts of the Apostles and the Disciples and all the people involved in every incident. So in Acts chapter 1, we're going to chapter 1, and we're going to start in verse 1. And the former treatise, Have I Made... O Theophilus, Philophysus, and of all that Jesus began both to do and teach. Now, listen to that. See? Because this is the book that's after the Gospels. So the, these books now that are going to follow are going to be talking about all that Jesus do and all that he was teaching to his people, to the chosen ones. And when I say the chosen ones, I'm not just talking about Israel. I'm talking about the chosen ones, those who responded to his call, those who made a decision when he came to get them and said, come and follow me. Those who followed him after that, many days, months, and years after that, for three years or so, all of those that got healed, got saved, got delivered, got made free, got raised from the dead, there were many. There were hundreds. And they're not all recorded in the Gospels. Nor are they all recorded in any of the other books, but they are referred to. And so God, in all of his faithfulness, what does he say now? 
So it, it's, he's telling you, he's setting you up to let you know that this is what this book is going to be about, the Acts of the Apostles. That's why it's called the Acts of the Apostles. Amen. So he said, all the things that Jesus began both to do and to teach until the day in which he was taken up. Now he taught them all the way up to the last day until he was taken up where? Taken up into heaven. After that, he, through the Holy Ghost, had given commandments. What? Wait a minute. He gave the commandments through the Holy Ghost? He had the Holy Ghost? He gave the Holy Ghost to the apostles, and he told the, the apostles, go and give these commandments unto the apostles whom he had chosen. There it is. See, he's telling you it's the ones he had chosen. Praise the Lord. Now he's talking about on a personal level, on a one-on-one, -on -one, and all of those and 70 more who followed him and followed his ministry. And he says, look, I'm giving you power to tread on serpents and scorpions and all the power of the enemy. So he said, you can do that. I've given you the commandment to give this. See, this, these are the commandments of love. They're not drudgery. They're not hard. They're not you, trying to work them up in your flesh to do, oh, I got to make sure I don't steal this. I got to make sure I, ain't, I didn't kill nobody. Or if I did, okay, but God is going to forgive me. I got to do a thousand penance. No, 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 no. That's not what he's talking about. He's talking about the law of love. He's talking about the law of faith. He's talking about how he gave that to them through the law of his love to them, love to humanity. Love, that's why he paid the price and went through all he went through for us. That's why anybody can get born again anywhere and you become his. You are the chosen. So he said, after that, through the Holy Ghost, he's given the commandments unto the apostles whom he had chosen. To do what? To whom also he showed himself alive after his passion by many infallible proofs. There are all kinds of proof that Jesus existed, that Jesus went through what he went through for us, to save us, to deliver us, to heal us, to make us free, to bless us, to get all our wealth back, all our health back, all our prosperity back, all everything back, people. To return everything back, infallible proofs, which being seen of them for 40 days. Oh, wow, he gave them more infallible proof within those 40 days of all that he was teaching them and all that he did, oh my, my. And he said, I want you to give it away to everyone you encounter. Wow, praise God. To everyone you encounter, give it away to them. And what he gave them those 40 days, oh man, I would have loved to have been there sitting there receiving that teaching for 40 days. 40 days of all the good stuff from Jesus, being in his presence like that, 40 days straight, nonstop, which you can do even now if you desire. If you really want God to make a way, wow, praise you, Lord Jesus. But 40 days, can you imagine all they received from Jesus? And speaking of things pertaining to the kingdom of God. So now, people, there's your proof what he talked about, some of it. The kingdom of God. Well, all of it was about the kingdom of God. Because that's what he said. 40 days, speaking of things pertaining to the kingdom of God and being assembled together with them. He was with them all of that time. 
So they were sleeping together, they were eating together, they'd get up together and eat ministered. Another day, another day, and another day. Oh, wow, that had to be amazingly awesome. Praise the Lord. I'm looking forward to something like that one day with Jesus. And so what did he say? Being assembled together with them, commanded them that they should not depart from Jerusalem. I don't want you to leave Jerusalem. You stay here because I'm getting ready to send you something very important. He said, but wait for the promise of the Father. Because see, the Father promised him that he was going to give his apostles these gifts. And the one major thing that he wanted to give them was his power so that they could go and do what he did. The same thing. You can do it. You believe it. You shall receive it. You can do what Jesus did. Oh, my, 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 my. Oh, Apostle, you're just, you're just really <laughs> out there. You're just really extreme. No, I've done it. I've seen hundreds and thousands of other ministers and leaders and people that's in the body of Christ. You don't have to have an office. You don't have to have a title. You can still do what Jesus did. When you operate in his holy, precious spirit, wow, that he told the apostles, wait. You know, some of us are so impatient and we can't wait for nothing. He said, be anxious for nothing. Don't get in no hurry. Wait. Wait on the Lord. Be patient. I have it all planned out. I have it all worked out already for you. The disciples, the apostles had no clue that God had already set up everything. God had already orchestrated everything for everything to work perfectly for them. Oh, my, 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 my. And the goodness of God, his Holy Spirit guided and directed them. That's why he said you got to wait for him because you don't know what to do. You don't know what to do. You don't know how to do it. And quit thinking that you can figure it out because you can't do that either. <laughs> you cannot figure out what God has in store for you, what God has in mind for you to do, where he, what he has in mind for where you to go. Don't assume you know. It's because of what you've been doing in the past. Because God is a God of multiplication. God is a God of increase. He, he, he wants you to expand. He wants you to do more. you got more gifts and talents that you don't even know about. You don't even know you have yet because you haven't gotten into the will of God for your life. And so you find that out. You learn as you go. Your faith grows as you go. You grow in faith as you go. You grow in instruction and direction as you go. You grow as you obey and as you follow the instruction. You can't just be a hearer of the word, but you must be a doer of the word. So you grow as you do. As you do, you grow. It goes both ways. You sow and you reap, and you reap and you sow, and you sow and you reap, and you reap and you sow. He said, seed time and harvest time shall never cease. You have to continue. You don't stop there. You think you got such great victories. No, God said that's not enough. That's No, I got more. I got more for you. It's exceedingly and abundantly above all that you're asking me and all that you're thinking. So God and all of that, he said, but wait for the promise of the Father, what? Which, he said, you have heard of me. 
you heard me talk about what the promise of the Father is. For John truly baptized with water, but you shall be baptized with what? My, 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 my. You're going to be baptized with the Holy Ghost. He said, and it's not going to be that many days from now. Wow. So when Jesus descended into heaven and they saw him leave on that last day he taught them, the 40th day, 40 is a very significant, important number to God. And so that 40th day, that's the beginning of your newness. Wow, because the root of 40, yes, and so that is the beginning. That's a newness. That's a freshness. So 40, because what happened when Jesus, when, when the Holy Ghost, here we go. It was the Holy Ghost who told him to go where? Into the desert, into the wilderness place, because he had to minister into him to prepare him. Even Jesus had to get prepared for his ministry. Even Jesus had to get ready. Even Jesus had to go on a fast. Jesus had to do all of that as well. So you need to understand that God in all of his faithfulness to you, praise the Lord, that he says, I am going to make sure you are equipped that you have everything you need, all the power you need, all the help you need, all the assistance, all the administrative, educational, blah, 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 you name it, spiritual, physical strength, anointing, everything. You're going to have it all once you receive what? This Holy Ghost power that you're going to get in a few days. Oh, my, 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 my. You're going to receive this Holy Ghost power that's going to come upon you within a few days. Wow. Praise God. Praise God. So, that is who the Holy Spirit is. He is the one that is there for you. He will protect you. He will guide you. He will direct you. He will instruct you. He will show you. He will teach you. He will give you impartation. He will heal. He, Jesus paid for his own spirit to be with you, to be in you. And he said, I'll never, 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 never means never. I'll never leave you, I'll never forsake you, I'll never lead you astray, I'll never let you go by yourself, I never will. So I want you to receive and believe that I am who all I say I am and I will do all I say I can do because I'm able to go far beyond exceedingly, abundantly above all that you could ask or think according to my power that's working in you. Now, you have to allow it. You must allow it. And so that's why God wants you to get these teachings. He wants you to get these teachings. He wants you to continue to watch the authentic word. He wants you to continue to watch more programs on OCN Broadcasting Network. And so what a blessing you will be to billions of others to receive this power that is so necessary for you to receive salvation. So God bless you, and I'll see you next time on The Authentic Word. Shalom, shalom.